Good girl, you're singing. Girl, you're singing. Yes. You want to say hello? Tiki can say hello, but he doesn't feel like it. Alright. Hello, Tiki. He wants to jump on the camera. <laughs> Turning around to get a treat. Oh, so pretty. Oh, look at that neck. Hey! Oh, wing! Oh, that was sweet. Thank you, Tiki. Hello, Tiki. Hello, Tiki. Hello, Tiki. Are you turning around? Turn around. Good bear. Hello, Tiki. Hello, everyone. It's Maha. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me once again. I'm so happy to be with all of you. I hope that you've had a fantastic, wonderful holidays. Happy New Year to all of you. I just thought I'd do a catch-up chat video today, sharing some things with you. I've got a couple of new decks to talk about and some other things, and I also wanted to show Cheeky today in this video because so many of you have been asking me where he is and how come you don't see him in videos anymore. Uh, so I thought I'd just, you know, since it's the new year, have Cheeky say a little hello as well. Right now he's quietly in the kitchen. He's just finished taking a bath, so he's uh, sort of relaxing and drying up. So I'll bring him in a moment. And he's very quiet, which is rare. It's a rare thing. Usually I have to put him in a separate room because he makes too much noise for me to be making my videos. So 2020. Wow. Isn't it an amazing number? I think it's just such a cool number. I just like writing it, you know, 2020 just looks good, sounds good to my ears, and it just feels like it's going to be a positive year. I feel really positive about this year. I feel a lot of positive energy coming through. I don't know about you guys and how you feel about it, what you've been sensing. Personally, I've had in the past 10 years quite a challenging decade. So I'm so happy to step into this new decade. It's just so amazing to think about, isn't it? Just wow, time is such a, so strange. It's such a strange thing. It's beautiful. Someone just entered and that's Cheeky. So I'm going to bring him in in a second because I know he's going to be wanting to come in. Yeah, you come in a second. Hello. So yeah, wasn't it also wonderful to have uh, a new moon on Christmas Day? I just thought that was so beautiful. It was really nice uh, for me. Just, I mean, my family and I don't really celebrate Christmas like in a traditional sense. It's just more a way of getting together, enjoying our time together. Solstice, winter solstice is a huge one for us in my family with my cultural background. And Chiki wants to interrupt and enter. So I'm just gonna pause for a moment and bring him in. So I have Chiki here on my shoulder. Say hello Chiki. I'm gonna give him some treats while I talk to you guys because it's time for his snacks. So, but we'll see how he behaves. Chiki, will you say a hello Chiki to everyone? Oh, thank you for the kiss. Can you give me a kiss? Can you give me a kiss? Kiss, Chiki, kiss. Oh, thank you, baby. Good boys get treats. That's right, he's a good boy. Oh, so, yeah, I haven't shown Chiki very much here on my channel because he he's very hyperactive. He doesn't sit still. He's he can, like, I haven't trimmed his feathers, his flight feathers, so he flies around and... Thank you for the kisses. He just wants treats. He knows if he kisses me and he acts sweet, then he gets treats. I just can't help it. I'm a sucker for his sweetness. <laughs> Hi, baby. Okay. So, yeah, some, some, some things have been happening during solstice. Um, so I was saying that Chiki, you have to behave. Chiki has to be a good bird if he wants to be on camera. Chiki, you'll get treat if you're a good bird. Thank you for the kisses. Yeah, so he'll probably fly off in a moment. So he decided to go over there for now. We'll see. I was uh, talking about winter solstice for my family and I in our Persian tradition. 
it's called we call it Yule Yalda, very similar in sound and also in writing. Both starts with Y and has an L. I have made a video, a couple of videos on Yalda and how we celebrate and what we do and what it's all about. I will post one of them down below. I have a playlist called Cultural, which you can find the other ones in as well as the Persian New Year, if you want to hear more about it. So uh, this year was a bit different because we lost a dear family friend. Unfortunately, it was a very sudden death, totally unexpected. He was very healthy, very uh, youthful, uh, such amazing energy, such wonderful person, huge loss. And so this year for us, it wasn't really a celebration. Like we didn't really feel like celebrating. This man was always present during our celebrations. He was also like my father. Um, that's the thing with having Cheeky in the background is he's very dis disruptive. So I constantly have to edit videos and I don't like doing editing. I just don't like it. It's a lot of work and it, I just don't like the unnatural sense that it has. I like to just be natural and talk, but sometimes you can't help it, right? So I was saying that uh, this man was just such a positive influence in my in my family, in, my, in our circle of friends within the family. And whenever we got together during the Yalda nights, we, uh, he was a major part of these activities. He it was a musician as well as my father. So they, they oftentimes were, you know, the life of the party, entertaining people with their music and just sitting together. So he was, he was a, a main figure in these gatherings. And so this year that didn't really happen, unfortunately. Another thing I've been going through is one of my best friends. She was diagnosed with cancer a year ago, and then she had a reoccurrence just a couple of months ago. So it's been difficult. It's been uh, affecting me emotionally. So this year, this celebration year was, you know, it was different. It was different. It was still really nice. Uh, we got together still with family and I got to spend some just beautiful, intimate moments with my friends and my family. So that was good. And also my birthday is at the end of November. So usually for me, after November 24th, which is my birthday, all the way up until New Year, it's quite busy. There's a lot of stuff happening. It's my birthday first, and then my two best friends' birthdays after, and then my brother's birthday also after that, within this time period. And then there's the Christmas stuff, you know, friends, family who celebrate. I will partake in that. Uh, solstice. Uh, you know, there's just all of this stuff going on. And then mm, it was just this, this sense of bittersweetness to this year. There was on one side, wonderful, memorable moments. And then the other side was sadness. So it was learning how to hold that paradox this year. I read once in a book that, uh, a real sign of maturity comes when you're able to hold paradox in life. And my, my best friend, the one who's been diagnosed with cancer, was telling me how she, when her father died last year, she's been going through a lot, she said to me that when her father passed away, she felt this sense of gratitude for her father and what he meant to her and how he was with her as a father, at the same time sadness. So it was like holding these two together containing these two, a sense of gratitude and also a sense of loss. So yes, that's how, that's sort of been the theme of this, the end of this era, I guess, this decade and entering into 2020. I'm, uh, I wish that for myself and also for everyone I'm watching, I wish that it's, it's a year of happiness and health and wellness. And, you know, that's just, it's, isn't it the important thing is to be healthy and have our friends with us, our, our family and our loved ones with us. That's just such a gift in and out of itself. So at around my birthday time, I got a gift from my friend Elrin from Space Between the Notes. He didn't know it was my birthday, but he asked if, 
if I wanted a copy of his deck, Spirit Doodle cards. And I will be doing a, not a walkthrough, but just sort of sharing some thoughts and experiences with this deck coming up. I am currently in the midst of working with it and getting to know it. I don't want to do just a superficial kind of walkthrough kind of, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I just feel like this particular deck is one that it has taken Elrond a very long time to make this deck and he has really poured his love, his soul into this deck. I can see it, I can feel it, and I can uh, I can feel it even more when I'm working with it. So I do want to make sure that I do a good job at presenting this deck to you when the time comes, when I'm ready, hopefully soon. I bought myself a birthday present with, well, I had a gift card from Amazon for a birthday gift and I kind of added to that a little bit and bought another deck. So I bought myself two decks this year for Christmas and and uh, birthday and you know one thing I have to say is I haven't bought a deck for let's see now two and a half years maybe and I just was so shocked at how much the prices of decks have gone up is it just me or is this actually a fact I feel like they've gone up a lot for I got two decks so one of them was the ancestral tarot deck which I love and the uh, forest enchantment tarot is that what it's called hold on yes it's the forest of enchantments tarot deck and i absolutely love it and then i got another deck um which i'm going to talk about in a second so i to be honest i haven't actually looked at all the cards for the tarot the forest of enchantment or the ancestral tarot deck i didn't want to do an unboxing and I was thinking about that this morning as I was having my breakfast I was thinking uh, that I prefer doing unboxings on my own not on camera because I'm trying to I guess I'm trying to bring mindfulness in the different parts of my life and also mindfulness not just to working with the cars but also when I when I'm opening the deck mindfully connecting with the images, uh, paying attention to the sounds, the thoughts, the emotions, everything that comes up within myself and how I feel about the, the cards and what they're saying to me and insights of, I come up with. I find that if I'm making a video at the same time, if I'm filming a video doing an unboxing, then my attention is, my focus on my attention is divided. It's not just with me and the cards. It becomes about how I might, how others might be perceiving me and how I might be coming across, you know, so it, it's no longer a really sacred moment for me. And I feel that with my decks, I, the beginning part is important to me, establishing a relationship with them. So I like to, uh, to really enjoy that moment to myself. I like to be selfish about it. If, if that's the other way I can explain it. So I haven't actually even looked through all the cards yet. I opened the deck when I had the chance. You won't believe it because most people don't understand how I can actually leave a deck unopened on my table or my desk for days without opening it. The, you know, people usually ask me like, how can you do that? When I get a box from Amazon, I open it right away. Uh, I, I guess I've, I sort of like to, ever since I was a child, I naturally geared towards this delaying gratification, delaying gratification, or sort of anticipating for something that made me excited. It made me excited to know something is waiting for me and I can't wait to open it. Okay, so I'll get this work done first and that'll be my reward. So that's kind of what I've done. And then I started looking at the ancestral deck, just flipping through it slowly, individually, really absorbing it, enjoying it, taking pleasure in it. And same with the Forest of Enchantments. I will say quickly though, I just love the backs of the Ancestral Tarot deck. Love it. It reminds me of a round selenite crystal and just this color is very peaceful color. The backing of the Tarot of Enchantment also really matches with this. And I gotta go grab it again. 
Oh, here it is, the Terror of Enchantment backing, and then this Ancestral Terror deck. I think it really, they, they really go well together, that green and blue, and then that, that center here, that clear space, that's sort of this bluish sky blue tone that, I don't know if you can see, that sort of reflects on this. So I have these two on my altar next to each other, and I've been called to use my Opalite for the first time. This was gifted to me a couple of years ago from a good friend. And some people, you know, don't like Opalite because they say, oh, it's just glass. It's not real crystal. It's man-made. But there is something about it I just love. This feeling of peacefulness and serenity that reminds me sort of of selenite or the same feeling I get from selenite. And so this crystal has been sitting on my ancestral tarot. The Forest of Enchantment, just a couple of words about it. Oh my gosh, it just feels so deeply spiritual, so nature-based. I love it. It's really making me feel connected to nature again. I've been, I guess, sensing this loss of connection to nature since I've moved to this apartment and I'm living in the middle of the city and all the noise and um, I just don't have that that luxury of walking to the backyard and seeing greenery everywhere. I do see trees, you know, from a distance and mountains, but it's not the same. And so I just, it brought back, looking through these images brought back that feeling of just deep connection to nature. That part of it that I love. Like there's something about these images. First of all, they're just so meticulously, highly detailed, so beautifully done, and you can find images of this deck on YouTube everywhere. Uh, my camera doesn't do any justice for it, so I won't even bother flipping through it right now. Uh, but it's, yeah, the detail, the skill, the artistic skill that's put into this work really clearly tells me it's taken a lot of time for her to make this deck, a lot of energy and a lot of beautiful energy. Love it. Just so far, I have a feeling it's gonna be one of my favorite decks to work with. And then um, what I wanted to say about Ancestral Tarot deck was just that I love the fact that the cards are larger. Not that I want this for every deck, but it's so nice to have that. It's so chunky, so you can see the whole image just so clearly vividly all the details i'm loving that aspect of it and i also love that it's all hand painted so you can really see the textures of the paint the juiciness i just mm, yum love it gets me all excited and uh and yeah i just i i really feel like it's a it's another it's another deck that works a lot with the nature energy that i absolutely love one thing i'm not sure about and I guess this is all an early criticism. Uh, I wasn't sure about the fact that she has given the suits, because each suit is dedicated to a specific race of people that relate to all of us as humanity and that our connections in, within different cultures. So she's chosen uh, the Native American and then I think Japanese, depending on, uh, I think, a, a part in history that she's exploring. And then uh, the Renaissance, I, I, or maybe uh, Arthurian legend. I don't know. Actually, I haven't even really closely looked, but just from what I remember. And then the suit of wands is related to the Egyptians, but they're depicted as black African. And I, that confuses me. And I wish there was some explanation in the book about that, because personally, knowing what I know about the history of Egypt and having it being oh, so connected to uh, uh, my own past, my own cultural background of ancient Persia. We were geographically close and also historically shared a bunch of things. So I kind of know some things about it through my own studies of Egyptian history and also in real life studying the artifacts in different museums around the world. Anyway, my point is that uh, from what I know, it it's not, and it, this is a controversial topic, but there isn't really a black or white division when it comes to race of ancient Egypt. Um, what it was, it was, it was just very much like Persia, depending on what part of the country, there was a spectrum of different skin tones, really. Like in Persia, we have, for example, in the north, we have more 
uh, fair skin, blue eyes, light, lighter skin, and then the, the middle area is more like olive skin. In the west, we have more like Asian almost looking. In the south, we have uh, it ranges between my skin tone to very dark black black. So to take just one um, skin color and designate it to a whole group of the ancient people, such such prominent people in history, is confusing to me, and it might be explained in the book that this deck originally was created by the artist and I, I'm almost 100% sure and some of you can perhaps enlighten me that I think it does have a guidebook that's sold separately uh, but in this mass market deck made by or well, published by US game system there's no explanation whatsoever so I wish what they had done at least is put a website to her uh, her website so where she where you can possibly get a copy of the guidebook but please if you know more about this enter it in the comment section for everybody to read as well and for myself because I'm not sure um, number one I'm not sure why that skin color was designated to the Egyptians to the ancient Egypt as a whole uh, and two I don't know if it was uh, intended for a specific reason uh, Having a mass, having producing a mass mass market deck, they I think need to include some information for the general public who really may not know much about this particular deck, you know. So anyway, gosh, that was my rant. Thank you for listening. Uh, the next one I wanted to focus on, which actually didn't, I got a bit of a divergence there. I have been following a psychologist named Rick Hansen, author and psychologist. He's made, a, well, one of his popular books is called Buddha's Brain. Rick Hansen is an amazing human. He is doing some really amazing work out there. He is just so generous, so such a beautiful soul. And I'm learning so much from him. I registered through Sounds True through a course that's called um, the Foundations of Well-Being. And I registered last year, 2019. It's a lifetime membership. And so he does teachings every week, exercises, uh, quizzes, ex different kinds of exercises, practices, and interviews. And that's how I discovered his deck which is called Just One Thing card deck. And I bought this from Amazon. Actually, no, I didn't. I'm lying. But you can buy it from Amazon. It's a 52 practice. It says 52 practices for more happiness, love, and wisdom by Rick Hansen. Just one small thing can change your life. So well, I'll just read you the back quickly. It's one paragraph. These 52 practices are grounded in brain science, positive psychology, and contemplative training. They're simple and easy to do, and they produce powerful results, results bringing you more joy, more fulfilling relationships, and more peace of mind and heart. So, um, I don't have the cards here. So, basically, the back of the cards, you know what? I'm going to go grab one. So, basically, the back of the cards is like this. Nothing impressive, especially for us uh, Oracle and Tarot deck snobs. This, uh, I wish they had just put a flower or something here. But anyway, oh my gosh, I'm being so critical today. <laughs> but I love this deck. Okay, don't get me wrong. It's, you know, I don't think of it as an Oracle deck. I think of it as practices. You know, every day, I just, not every day, every once in a while, I'll take a card read the back, read what it says. Sometimes the card is actually double-sided. Sometimes if there's not enough that they wanted to say, it's one-sided. There's no numbering or anything. It's just very, you know, I have to say, it is very left brain. Uh, it, it is just information and very, you know, sharp edges and so yeah it's not it's not meant to be for beauty aesthetics or anything like that it's just just the guidance just the messages on the cards are important and i'm really loving incorporating this into my meditative practice sometimes what i do is i just listen to one of uh, rick hansen's teachings for a while and contemplate that and then i'll pick a card and just read it and think about it and it might stay on my shelf for days before I feel like changing it so it's not like an everyday thing because some of these practices take time 
take time to uh, to set into a pattern in your brain, right? Through repetition. So I've been really enjoying that book and I wanted to share that with you because it's not really a, a typical book that in this community, I mean, a deck that in this community comes up. You obviously have heard of the other ones and I hope you've heard of the Spirit Doodles, that, the one that my friend Eldrin made, which I will hopefully share in another video coming up. It's getting dark really quickly these days. Well, not these days. I mean, it, hopefully we're getting light back again, right? In the with the uh, days getting longer slowly, one day at a time. But I I wanted to make my video today at three o'clock, and I didn't think it'd be this dark. So hopefully the lighting is going to be okay too in this video. I want to end it soon though, while Chiki still quiet. One last thing I wanted to share with you was oh oh oh, let me do my magic trick. Hooray, chocolates! <laughs> this is uh, a gift that was given to me for my birthday. Truffles. Vegan, soy-free, dark chocolate, gluten-free, fruit sweetened. Can it be any better than that? I mean, any healthier than that? Vegan, soy-free, dark chocolate, gluten-free, no sugar. Truffles. Amazing. Handmade, hooray, truffles. Uh, they are just hooray, like hooray. They are made in the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia and I got this as a gift and I am addicted now. <laughs> unfortunately, I fortunately or unfortunately, I went on their website and they have a monthly subscription. Oh, no, no. I was like, oh, 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 I can see what's going to happen. These chocolates, I'm telling you, everybody, when you put one of these truffles in your mouth, you have to just close your eyes. You have to just tell everybody like, don't talk to me. Nobody talk to me right now because I'm enjoying this chocolate. It's amazing. You just want to fully engage all your senses. It's that good. Am I selling it to you enough yet? I'm not getting paid for this. Maybe I should tell them, hey, can I get a discount? No. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to buy more because I'm trying to cut back on caffeine even though it's a little bit it's not too much but I'm just trying to actually see what happens uh, to my blood sugar levels if I don't eat dark chocolate dark, dark chocolate is a is a, a weakness for me it's a it's a weakness because I just love it so much and I think I found my favorite one so it says listen a mindful conscious sustainable pleasure and this packaging is not lying. It is what it is. It is true. Okay. Am I done? I think I'm done. I think I should be done because it's been longer than I thought. I always say I'm going to make a short video and it never works out. So I hope you enjoyed it. I really wish you a wonderful new year for all that you have planned, all that you wish, all your hopes and desires and dreams. May they all come true. Mwah. Sending you kisses. Thank you, as always, for being here. I am grateful to have the pleasure of being with you. And I'm sending you lots of love. See you in my next video. Bye, everyone. Take care.